Well, the 15th Congress of the South African Communist Party says in its sober assessment of the current state of South Africa, the gathering concluded that the momentum of its communist struggle with its alliance partners has stalled and even reversed in some aspects. The event which took place in Boxburg, Johannesburg, saw Soli Mapaila being elected the SACP's new general secretary, while Bladen Zimande became the party's national chairperson. The Congress take took place as the country goes through many crises. Uh, these include, of course, poverty, unemployment, record high food and petrol prices, high crime statistics, especially murder, a failing state capacity and institutions, among many ills. Well, joining us now, SACP General Secretary, Soli Mapaila, and he's here to talk about the party and its role as a partner in govern governing South Africa. Congratulations. Thank you, Leanne. Um... Good morning. How are you feeling? I mean, obviously not an unexpected uh, position, but it's good to see that it was unopposed. It was a, 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 a great victory for you. So how are you feeling today about it? Well, it's a great honor, firstly, uh, to be entrusted with this responsibility. It's a big responsibility, particularly given the state of uh, levels of poverty in our country, the state of the working class and working class organizations which the party is much more concerned about to rebuild them so that they can service society properly. So that's a massive, massive task here. Yeah. yeah, it is a big task because there's a lot of challenges facing South Africa at the moment. We outlined them in the introduction, and I'm going to talk to you about those in a short while and how you're hoping to do your bit to try and you know, assist South Africa in moving forward. But it is also a big celebration. I mean, we're talking 100 years of the Communist Party. And mm. if we have to look back at the legacy of what has been done, what, what, what part has the SACP played in South Africa? The SACP has been part of all critical moments in South Africa's uh, transition to democracy, starting in the 1920s from its beginning, was the first organization to become non-racial. And a dream that um, was embraced by all South Africans uh, across the color line and further embraced in the 1955 adoption of the Freedom Charter, the Congress of the People. So, meaning that uh, three decades earlier, it was much more spot on to embrace non-racialism. Uh, we're still continuing on that particular uh, process. We have indicated that uh, even that aspect of fighting for a non-racial South Africa has regressed mm. um, in South Africa and even within the liberation movement, which were the champions of, uh, of this matter. We have then contributed uh, immensely, particularly in the 1940s, where uh, the ANC was uh, quite weak at the time, and we have recognized that it's an important organization of the, of the people of this country, and we deployed many of our cadres into the ANC to rebuild the ANC. And of course, the Youth League also came in in that posture towards the early 1940s to rejuvenate uh, the ANC. In the 1950s, given the strength of the Communist Party, um, the apartheid regime uh, banned us. We were the first to be banned uh, by, the, by the apartheid regime through the Suppression of Communism Act. But soon thereafter, we worked together with other organizations to mobilize for the Congress of the People. But at the time, the party was not officially at the Congress of the People because it was, it was banned. Only its leaders were there in different capacities in other organizations. Then we decided to prepare for underground. We were the first again to go underground and yeah. also to prepare for armed struggle. We trained uh, people in Umkonto Wesizwe, in what will become Umkonto Wesizwe, armed combatants first before the training. So we prepared uh, both um, key areas of uh, the deliberation war against apartheid and for democracy in our country. Uh, we participated in the broad mass struggles. Uh, our comrades, were, some of them went into exile. We came back, participated in the negotiations. We also organized internationally, the international solidarity, working together with our allies. So we have participated in all key uh, segments of our liberation struggle, and therefore we have played a critical role uh, in that regard. Yeah. But we continue to do so in the construction of a new South Africa, and we have seen that the new South Africa has more challenges. Indeed, indeed. Part of these challenges is that we have not been able to tackle uh, the divide um, between black and white in economic terms. Uh, the economy has remained largely owned by corporations, uh, big corporations, 
uh, the states, uh, I think, in the early stages, um, I think after the, um, the influence of President Mandela, the order of President Mandela, uh, allowed us perhaps to relax a bit. We, we thought the world is with us. Um, and they will we will work together with them. If you remember the, the Asian crisis, uh, which led to the introduction of gear in South Africa, we could have taken a different path at that time for democratization and economic development. But instead, we thought there's a goodwill based on this good aura of uh, President Mandela. But we soon realized that the world is not doesn't work like that. Mm. Uh, there are um, country-specific interests, particularly um, colonial imperialist interests of the US and, and Europe. Uh, anything that they want, if um, it doesn't change drastically their interests, they don't have a problem with it. But once we become uh, more independent, they, they start squeezing you. So we're an economy that um, uh, privatize some of its own uh, state-owned assets uh, instead of um, recapitalizing them and making them more functional to serve all the people. Today, uh, those institutions are failing in many respects to respond to the developmental needs of the people. Uh, that's why the Congress also has called for recapitalization of state-owned entities, including investments in such areas as uh, in energy, uh, continuous investment, not just only focus on uh, addressing load shedding. Of course, load shedding at the moment, it's, a, it's an urgent matter. We also discussed this question extensively uh, regarding load shedding. We are quite convinced that um, we could um, cut down on load shedding in this country and rebuild the capacity of ESCOM and other institutions in the energy sector. Yeah. And, of course, tackle unemployment head on. And this is, I, I mean, I'm listening to you, I'm sitting and I'm hearing everything you're saying and you speak through the history of the SACP and now we talk to 28 years of the government being in power and you talk about a lot of the issues of, mm. you know, where we, took, we, look, we talk about the colonial way of thinking, the Western world, and then we look at ourselves and we look at where South Africa is right now. And the reality is, is that a lot of it is also our own fault. And why? Because we talk of corruption. We talk of leaders that shouldn't necessarily be in the positions that they are. We talk of these leaders stealing from the very South Africans that vote for them. Um, we, we, we look at, at, at the rampant corruption that is literally looting our country. And this is the position we find ourselves in. We find ourselves with growth in a country that should be growing. We should be growing and creating jobs, and yet we're not. We should be feeding our children, and yet they're starving to death. We should be growing this country in terms of everything, but we are not. So the blame has to lie somewhere, and we can't always look out. We need to look in. So how are you, as the SACP, looking in to, to, to actually take account as to the role that you have played in the degradation of South Africa, and how do you plan on rebuilding it? We are not blaming everything outside. We, are, we have also accepted uh, internal weaknesses, um, major gross weaknesses, if one may say, uh, in respect to governance. Uh, we have had, uh, in some instances, complete governance decay, uh, disregard for the rule of law, um, which there are consequences that we can see also in society. Um, corruption. Uh, we're tackling that head on. Uh, we have never shied away from tackling this matter. You'll know. Uh, very uh, much we so. launched massive campaigns. In fact, at the Congress, we're honoring five comrades who died in the struggle against uh, 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 corruption, particularly in the so called VBS scandal. Um, so we'll continue with that fight for a clean governance. And I think uh, it's been intensified because now society is aware the fight that we have taken up to even some of our own comrades who were entrusted with responsibility to go into governance. And they began to steal from the masses, but also corporate South Africa that participated in the looting spree. You must remember that corruption in government is largely about uh, the state that has uh, turned itself into a procuring state or a tender state that doesn't uh, provide services. Majority, that's why we now talk about lack of skills in government. Mm. Because the skilled people, even when we send professionals largely in the state, their function is to procure services instead of uh, providing services from outside. And that has killed the capacity of the state. And the private sector that has colluded with those elements is not accountable to the people. It's the governing part in the government that is now accountable to the people. And to the extent that it has been weakened, 
we are making propositions regarding how to strengthen government, how to continue the fight against corruption, and how to be self-reliant. And I think that's a big issue uh, that came out of Congress as well regarding the new kind of a party branch, uh, what should be its critical task um, regarding uh, the area where they, they, they are located in the communities, how to build community economy. We pioneered uh, in the past the concept of township and village economies, but this was hijacked by proponents in government who did not understand it because they also did not want to work with us, but I think they love the, the term because it locates them to specific areas of need. Yeah. So we are relooking really into that, rejuvenating that so that we tackle unemployment and poverty in communities directly working with communities. I want to talk about your relationship with the ANC and going forward. I mean, you yourself, over this weekend, you spoke and said that it is time to rebuild and strengthen the ANC before it collapses. And that, those are strong words. Those are very, very strong words to use. Um, Bladen Zamande, who came about the chairperson now, came and also said that we need to, you need to reevaluate your relationship with the ANC. What is the relationship with the ANC? How does it stand right now? And what is the future of that relationship? Well, the relationship, um, it's okay. But um, not good enough, given that, that this relationship is not a relationship of leaders per se. It's a relationship of struggle. Um, in any way that you look at it, the ANC played a very significant role in this country towards the liberation uh, of our people and for democracy and so forth, and therefore it has to take its shoulder more blames for any weaknesses that exist. We are feeling that our revolution and its sense of regression can be averted, but to do so as we rescue it, we equally have to rescue the ANC that has also been afflicted by deep divisions, factionalism, uh, and all of these negative tendencies that we never thought would actually afflict a movement that has su such experience from other of its sister organization collapsing, when, particularly when they've taken over a political office. So we are looking into that particular space to say, how is South Africa going to survive with a much more weakened ANC? Mm. will become another African case. That is why a typical African case where liberation movement decay in office uh, and no one is able to rejuvenate the mission of struggle. So we want to contribute to that and that's why in the debate that we had with our comrades, even regarding this question of whether the SACP should stand on its own uh, uh, in the electoral platform, we located it within that particular space. Is there something that is rescuable uh, of, of, of the ANC? For instance, we were to give example as the first of the alliance component to go to Congress. We adopted our credentials in less than 15 minutes. That included presentation of the credentials where we have seen our movement afflicted by two, three days of Congress discussing simply participation in Congress, which uh, shows the level of regression organizationally in terms of discipline, in terms of unity, and when we are divided, we will not be able to carry out this mandate. That is why Congress has said the people in the movement should unite more and stop internal divisions. Because in many, in many instances today, when you see the ANC outside, um, it's when we are different on this or that issue, instead of how to implement this issue that we agree on. So we want to focus on that so that we can rescue the South African struggle for liberation and rescue key components who contributed in that liberation struggle and also broaden that space. Hence our theme, talk to building a powerful socialist movement of the workers and the poor, not for them, but of the workers and the poor. Yeah. So we're building it together with them. So that's what is important now going forward. My final question, and I know we're well into news time. I do. I am very much so aware of that. But just, I, I, I need some solutions from you because you've been witnessing the the the. the the fall of the ANC, if I could say that, for, for many years, for the greater part of, of watching this. You've been bemoaning this monopolist, capitalist approach that you spoke to over the weekend. Um, we, 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 you've sat and listened to the president say that government doesn't create jobs, that's up to the public sector, which I think is something that you're not necessarily um, supportive of in terms of that. But then on, on the back of that, and I've said it before, there is poverty, there is food insecurity, there's unemployment, record crime, there is murder in this country. We have failing state capacity and institutions. Um, th this is nothing new. It's just just everything is just getting worse. 
What is your solution? How do you come in as a new leader in this position and say, this is what we're going to do to fix this? Working with our people, with our communities, is the primary task. We've seen the disconnect between the liberation forces and the people on the ground. That sometimes government uh, also works uh, outside connections with the masses. So we're trying to bring, to come in as a bridge to reconnect the two, uh, integrate both the plannings, not uh, in the manner that, for instance, we have seen IDPs in communities uh, being abused by consultants and so forth, but to reconnect with the people, for instance, to confront crime. Uh, we are launching a massive campaign. We have agreed from Congress that perhaps we should go to some of the areas that a community has been overtaken by criminals who also work sometimes with the police and overwhelming the good working policemen and women in such kind of communities. So we'll be working together with the people on that. We are launching this program again in the fight against uh, poverty. Uh, I, I must also indicate that uh, we've already started, uh, despite that we just finished from Congress, there's one of our comrades, who, a South African by the way, mm. who has mm. been uh, honored in Britain for working to end poverty in Britain. <laughs> so we're trying, we're, we're working with him to say, how did you do it? Because he's, a, he's, he's, he's fighting poverty from a grassroots structure. Yeah. I'm actually meeting him today so that we, we start working hand, uh, immediately with all plans and alternatives that are available to share, to share with our communities and see how we can really tackle these current challenges that we face as a society. All right. I'll have to leave it there, Solly. I know there's lots to talk about, but uh, we're going to have time as the years go by. It'll yeah, be yeah. wonderful Most to certainly. always engage with you. But here is the newly elected SACP General Secretary, Solly Mapaile, after the party's 15th Congress, which reflected on certain aspects of the state of the country and, of course, its relationship with the ANC. All right, we enter news time.